And welcome to Mind Boggles. Hope you've enjoyed some of our shows in the past. Today we're going to talk, uh, tackle a, a very interesting, a real mind-boggling thing called quantum theology. Well, what the heck is quantum theology? Well, um, this is the idea of what's the nature of reality today based on the idea of quantum physics and how does that relate to religion? Like what? <laughs> how do you get from A to Z? We're going to cover some of that today very quickly, but you get an idea of some of the basic points. First of all, we all agree that the world is changing fast, do we not? I mean, several hundred years ago, religions were kind of confined to geography. Certain countries had certain religions, they kind of stayed there. Now, religions are like rivers that run through the planet. We have Hindus, Buddhists everywhere, we have Christians everywhere, we have Sikhs, we have, they're all over the place. Geography doesn't mean too much now. We have the internet. We have the, the internet, which is like a, a, a global neural network connecting people. We still have the momentum, however, of conditioned behavior where each culture has its own momentum. So what I'll be talking about today may not have much sense to the older generation, even the people in their 30s and 40s. But the people who are just being born and maybe in their 20s, this might have a lot of effect later on, maybe towards the turn of this century. And then again, uh, academically, I must admit uh, that this could all be wrong. You know, you got to say that when you're doing stuff uh, speculating, because we're talking about the future here. The future of religion. Well, uh, one of the definitions of religion from Joseph Campbell, one of the great mythologists in the West, was Mythology is anybody else's religion but mine, because <laughs> mine is valid, theirs is myth. Uh, and he also defined religion as misunderstood mythology. Right? So the idea is how can we understand more about how the metaphors in all religions point to a higher level of reality. Now, my premise is that we're talking about the quantum physics discoveries in this past hundred years which gives us the evidence that there's something behind space-time that contains all time, past and future, and all points in space as one point in space. Now, if that's not a mind-boggler, you need to turn up your TV set. Right? That's like, what? <laughs> so, but this is reality now. There is a quantum level of the game behind our normal space-time. Well, so what? How does that fit to anything? Well, as people get more and more uh, mobile on this planet, not just physically mobile, but consciously mobile, where they can sit in their bedroom at two in the morning and Google on uh, Hinduism or Jains or Shinto or whatever, bam, have access to information quickly, they'll start pulling together uh, their own idea of wisdom, their own idea of spirituality, their own idea of well, how does all this fit together. The young people will be less uh, cornered by their physical location and more flexible in terms of their virtual location or virtual ability. Well, quantum physics, what, what the heck are we talking about here? Society always follows science by about 100 years. Like about 1903, we discovered that not only does light act like a wave, it also can act like a particle. Well, that's interesting. Well, later on, we found that uh, with Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosin, they came up with the, a formula to prove that if two electrons were at one point related to each other and they zip off in opposite directions, going 186,000 miles a second, zipping off, if you measured one of those, the other one would reveal itself at the same time, instantaneously. Now, the frightening word here for physicists is instantaneously. Beyond the speed of light, instantaneously. Well, this completely violates everything we know. Well, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen could prove it mathematically. Later on in the 1970s, they finally built the hardware to measure this and found out, yes, it's true. And for us citizens to think, well, so what? <laughs> well, the so what part of it, when you cut to the chase, is that they can instantaneously, instantaneously communicate like there's no distance. 
there's no time. It's like they operate like one particular consciousness. One of the descriptions of this quantum potential behind space-time is all time exists in the now, all points in space exist as one point, and this quantum potential operates like one incredible consciousness. Right? Now, this might be the 21st century description of God. May it not, right? So, one of the premises that some people have thought about is you look at the teachings of the Hindu, of the Buddhist, of the Jains, of the Sikhs, and you read the literature of the enlightened beings, they describe the experience pretty much the same way as becoming one with everything. I and the Father, one kind of experiences. Now the problem is when you come back from the experience and tell your buddies about it, they think you're either crazy, you know, or you are now a saint of some sort. Tricky. The problem is trying to explain the quantum level oneness with our space-time reality that we consider logic, right? And it doesn't necessarily fit at all. So mythology has been the bridge to understand the unspeakable. The unspeakable in this case, we're talking about the quantum potential perhaps. So this experience of the quantum potential would be the mystical experience where by being quiet and still with your heart centered in love, your mind centered in the unspeakable, perhaps you can become one with God or one with whatever you want to call it, Brahma. Coming back from the experience, you realize it is doable. Anyway, one of the things that may be happening for the future of religion, maybe, is the young generations will start moving from tradition and going online, and a lot of them will have much more um, confidence in Google than their minister or their priest or their rabbi. <clears throat> so they'll start investigating the nature of reality, which for some, the nature of existence of reality is fundamental to the ground of how you build your approach to religion and the connection, connectedness is not. So, one of the things that may be happening in the future of religion, uh, no, there's no one religion that's going to win, but there might be uh, an assimilation of different ideas. But one of the things that may come to pass, not in my lifetime, but maybe in some of the children that are listening, the idea of the quantum physics piece will become part of it. The idea of the connectedness of all of us. The idea that we have access to all time and all space in deep meditation. Okay. So, just an idea. And part of this is this one consciousness can be perceived as possibility ways behind space time. Well, what the heck is possibility ways? Well, this is another mind boggler. You look at something like a hand or your television set or your tweaker, and it seems to be solid. Okay. But if you realize with, with deep microscopic research, there's it's just kind of a cloud of electrons just kind of floating there with things blinking in and out of existence. Yes. Well, behind all that, there is no little kernel of matter. It's all like possibility waves. Like, holy cow. Yeah. Now, the problem that we have here is that's reality. That's how it is in our existence. Well, how does that plug into religion? Well, one of the things that may be happening is quantum theology may be part of the future for a lot of people. One last quote, this is from Tillyard uh, Desjardins, the French philosopher. He says, someday after mastering the waves, the winds, the tides, and gravity, we shall begin to master for God the energies of love. And then for the second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. You know, mastering the physical plane is one thing, but mastering the inner planes, the heart, the consciousness, to become one with all of it, then we'll have mastered fire.
How's that for mind boggling? Well, I've been studying the, the, the quantum physics piece now for about 20 years and I'm still boggled. So if that has some interest for you, there's some stuff out there now for with quantum physics, how it fits into all this kind of stuff. And uh, it's in its infancy and you have a hundred quantum physicists to be hundred different views. But one view is the idea that behind our space time, there is the quantum potential which contains all time, past and future. It contains all points in space as one point in space and it operates like one mind, one consciousness. That seems to be the fundamental piece here. Anyway, interesting stuff. Hope you liked it. Mind boggles. So tonight or today, do something nice for yourself and see if you can do something nice for somebody else too. Till next time, see you later.